Is I Shani Majumdar? Hi. Hi. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Hi, Mitch. Hi. I missed you. You look so pretty. How are you? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Is your first day back at work? No, 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 no. Oh. No, I come like two or three times a month. More than that, I hope. Huh? <laughs> never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. You're so disgusting. <laughs> you look like a corporate woman. Do I? You are a corporate woman. I am. We were just joking that we look like we have like somewhere to be. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. we're just meeting our corporate friends. <laughs> I'm the boring one with the job and the, you know. Oh. <laughs> I'm the boring employed one. Yeah. These are, you guys are my quirky friends. Quirky unemployed. Yeah. Exactly. Y'all are having the time of your life. <laughs> you, you guys look so pretty. <laughs> Put together. <laughs> Um, or do you want to, let's put something in. Oh, I know I look very employed, very she professional. Looks, she looks like wait, she has tell, one tea. Tell, that, That's what we said today. We're like, we, we, we're, we're faking it. I can't take my, my jacket off because I ripped my... So sad. What look, happened? I ripped it. Oh, no, it kind of looks on purpose. No, it literally looks like a stock. Maybe I should rip the other side. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then you like um, blew up on me and then I was like, Actually, I, I blew up on you. <laughs> we love you. Yeah, we, we love you. We, we miss we you. Love you very much. We miss I you love so you much. Too. Really? Yeah. Okay, Wait, so. Uh, this is fairy. Where? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this fairy. Oh no. No, you could not. This fairy. Not this fairy. You know, I've been dating this guy. He got COVID. Supposedly. He got COVID. Okay. He goes to another school, okay? <laughs> oh my god! You got the hot no, I should probably hire you as an intern. Okay, I love that! Thanks, Ayashani, for the copy. Ding! No, but we should talk about it. <laughs> will, will, you, will you do a video with me? Sure. Yeah, I want to do a video about... We've been talking about me um, taking hormones. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, and if you guys have seen my other video, there are there's actually m so many more deeper things that I've like uncovered uh -huh. that I want to like discuss with you. Okay. Damn it! I wish we were talking more. Why don't the go? She's literally leaving. Okay. Bitch, yeah. I'm trying to be there, not just in spirit. Okay? Oh yeah, move to San Francisco. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. You know how many times I've written Aishani Majumdar, um, San Francisco, California. <laughs> Wow. Pose. Ooh. Her friend, okay, we'll just have a teaser for our video together, is that her friend told her one time, <laughs> she goes, she goes, Ayashani, Erica's not on hormones, and uh, Ayashani goes, no, and, she, and your friend with the R says, wow, she's really pretty, but she's going to age really bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I've been scared about well, bitch, that. Well, bitch, people have said that to me, and I'm on hormones. <laughs> Same. Have you seen her though? Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, yeah, up and I was like, watch yourself first. Watch yourself. <laughs> Follow Aisha on Instagram. What? <laughs> and subscribe to Shanti on YouTube. Okay, see you in. Uh, this is just. I don't know what's happening next. So. <laughs> Block your teeth before you come for me. <laughs> Take your lippies on, girl. It made a huge difference. Oh, oh wow. I invited my sis friend yeah. to speak on trans issues. Right. Yeah. And yeah. like she like had a trans roommate once. Yeah. And like she just like absorbed all the knowledge. <laughs> She's been a bride. Right. Yeah. Are you like giving it to me? I'm giving it. What's up, you guys? It's Erica Madera. I'm back. You know I never leave you alone. Did I already do the intro on the first part of the video? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, I manifested it really fast and she's already doing the video about the hormones with me. <laughs> Look who I got. Um, you know Ayashani. You guys probably, I don't know if you know. Well, if you've seen the Castro video, then you know. I'm here with my trans friend. Is that weird to say? Ah! <laughs> Did I out you? Not you clocking my tea. Did I just out you? Are you, Are you my trans sister? <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to make a video about like a, a even deeper dive into why I'm so scared about taking hormones. Um, so we have our expert maiden in hormone therapy here. Aisha Nga Jumdar. 
you want to tell people about like your journey? It's very like formal. I'm literally the transgender district right now. Like I know. interviewing like right. <laughs> trans scholars. I gotta tell them about Trinity Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time there was this young woman. Beautiful. Her name was Trinisha. Mm -hmm. Williams was what's her last name? It, it's her maiden name. Yeah. <laughs> Aisha is giving us everything we, we asked yeah. for. So go ahead, tell the people about Trinisha Williams, where she started, what's her home run, home run dose, and how she got here today. Oh, she's trying to open up some history books. Sistery. <laughs> some extra, of course, extra. Cut a corona extra. <laughs> mm. It's fucking good. Okay. All right. I'm a dark beard girl. You used to be a dark beard girl. <laughs> Pop it up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so once lived a girl. She lived all over the world, really. And she wanted boobies. <laughs> <laughs> she, she she wanted womanhood. She first started by moving to America. Check check. She had a to do list, mm. as you do with any project. But she wanted to be a woman of the United States of America. And she's here. Yeah. So it, take, it took a long journey, actually. I socially transitioned long before I started medical transition, partly because I was an immigrant, partly because I was not financially independent. And then, you know, figure out the hormone stuff and like, and the medical transition, which like seems so scary. Cause like where I grew up, people called it sex change. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gender reassignment surgery, gender yeah. affirmation surgery, you know, euphemisms. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of existed in this middle ground where I was dressing as a woman and, you know, figuring out my style, my aesthetic, my existence as a woman, you know, figuring out experimenting with makeup and hair and clothes and mannerisms and everything. It was like four years before I took... Oh, well, that... I have a similar situation. <laughs> yeah, it was like four years. <laughs> we'll get into that later. Yeah, yeah. I was scared and I was trying to figure out... Um, you know, the social transition piece. Originally thought I was like a femme gay boy, but clearly that's not. No. No. And we'll, In what world? Remember like years ago, uh, was it Shanti that called you fabulous? Yeah. And I was like, um, literally anyone who calls me fabulous, I like gag a little bit. It's I, a little like, drag queen. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like most trans girls that I know. Yeah, we're giving that. you real solid tips, like yeah, how to interact yeah. with Don't trans call people. a trans girl fabulous. No matter what kind of journey she's on, no matter if she looks like a brick or a cis passing ally, <laughs> do not call her fabulous. Block your tea before you come for me. <laughs> Block your tea before you come for me. I started hormones um, four years in. Damn, she's like cutting to the story. Are you, are you gonna let me tell, tell the story? This is my channel, bitch. <laughs> I got a job after graduation. I came here for college. And then I was like, okay, this is my final ticket to fund my own transition. This vision and this goal of this woman I wanted to be. And I was embodying the, even before medical transition. And I refused to be treated any other way. Like I was a woman first, trans was part of a descriptor word for the journey that got me to that. I say woman of trans experience because woman first is what I identified. And it's different for other girls and it's uh, different for other yeah, I identify members. as a YouTuber first. Y yeah. Then trans. Yeah, then, trans. <laughs> then, then, then like all the other things. Yeah, that, whatever else. <laughs> but I know girls who identify as trans first and other things later. And that's really just how you see yourself. We were even talking about it yesterday about like, I don't, I don't identify as a female, mm -hmm. but I'm a woman. But I'm not a female. It's how, it's how you see words it. Words wing in your identity. That's the beautiful part about this world. You're able to define that. Because mm -hmm. language what about is this country. Up. Yes, this country. But like yeah. This, yeah, this <laughs> yeah. Okay. Language, like we made that shit up. And we'll do it again. And we'll do it again. Yeah. For me, it was like the person I wanted to be rather than a checklist of things. Mm. It was a vision. Like I want my life to be like this as a woman and not so much, I want size D titties. Right. You know, so my checklist was different. Yeah, it's different for everyone. But I think that's what drew us together. We, we, yeah. met, we met on Grindr, by the way. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we, we weren't trying to have sex. <laughs> Let's make that clear. She just saw that I was graduating from Berkeley and she was like, girl, me too. Girl, me too. Um, but we had our graduation stoles in our like and Grindr pictures because we wanted to show that we're educated women that's what drew us to each other and but i also think it's a good message too yeah um, to i agree like what's your overall big picture mission and vision that you're working towards rather than just having this pursuit of one body yeah your hormone regimen and your surgeries 
Well, yeah, We're like, is checklist lot. is like bad, but like, here's my checklist. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean that just because it wasn't your first party doesn't mean it wasn't a yeah. very important big part of your life. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I say, like my body, my body was important. It had a big picture vision around it as well. It had context, if you will. Yeah, I started hormones four years after social transitioning. I was so scared of it. Mm -hmm. I went through laser hair removal before I started hormones. Mm -hmm. and at least I want to get rid of my facial hair. That was important for me. That's, yeah, that's the only yeah. medical thing that I've done. It just it has to be done. Yeah. And, it, and it also doesn't change that much about you. Let's it's like a haircut. It's, it's a I, permanent haircut. So I did that and I you know, used to talk to my endocrinologist and she made sure that I had all the resources available to me. She would make sure that I knew that I had access to hormones if I wanted it. I loved her for it. That was in Berkeley. She, yeah, she was my first like you know, medical professional mentor, if you will. So I started really small with the smallest dosage possible. I um, had no T blocker. I just started with estrogen, increased it just a little bit, a couple months down the line, but, I, but no T. I, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no T. <laughs> Six months in, I was like, I think it's time for a, a like T blocker. Cause I was like seeing the changes a little bit. My lifestyle had changed. Completely, I was like trying to get my career started in corporate America. But I wanted to start tea blockers. Start tea. <laughs> I, <laughs> I wanted, wanted to start, start tea. tea. So I started with spirulina. Spirulina. Spiral the dragon. <laughs> Spironolactone. It just didn't work for me, but it was good. I quickly saw the changes that I was looking for. That's and when I, we, we met, right? You had just yeah, started tea blockers. Yeah, I just started tea blockers. Yeah, exactly. This is the end of Trinisha Williams. Oh, right. I buried her. <laughs> my goal was always to be this woman and part of that womanhood was to medically transition in a certain way. But you wanted to get forehead reduction. <laughs> what can we tell them? Trinisha Williams. No, this was during that time that you wanted this and I well, kept yeah, her because no. I was like traumatized by Trinisha Williams. Look at, her, look at, look at, she does not need forehead reduction surgery. And I kept saying, no, stop, let the hormones do it. And I then, wanted FFS. And then our friend Diana told you and not I to get it and she got all the credit. <laughs> That's not true. Kind of hit the accelerator. Because also medical transition is hard. It's hard shit. Figuring out who you are through hormones, like the changes of hormones, you're literally going through puberty again. I was so tired of putting so much effort in my hair and makeup and everything all the time because, and not in the way that like sometimes cis women do, where it's like to look good, right? But it was to oh exist God. as a woman. Because if I didn't put that much effort, I looked like a man. I have m so much makeup on right now because I got laser two days ago and I couldn't shave. Yeah. And I was like, I'm about to film a YouTube video with the most beautiful woman in the <laughs> world. Um, not to mention transgender. Like, what the fuck? I'm gonna look like Shrek 2. <laughs> and I feel like sometimes when I've said that in groups of cis women, they're like, yeah, welcome to womanhood. And it's like, no, you have no idea what it's like to live on two extremes two different like extremes in one day. And that's what I wanted to tackle with my medical transition to get away from those signifiers. I feel like my body just worked on hormones like I wanted it to. My facial structure, fat distribution within my body, it changed so many things, but it also changed things mentally. It just felt so much more comfortable. I felt at peace in a way in my body. Then I realized the next step was to completely remove tea. It still felt like a battle, like some internal battle was going on between estrogen and testosterone in my body. Part one to the surgery was orchiectomy. You don't have to get part one, part two. You can get it all in one go, but I wanted to get testosterone out of my body as soon as possible and I couldn't wait because of the wait list and everything to get full, the full bottom surgery. Um, so I got orchiectomy first. And, and I took care of she took care and of me. And we watched Emily in Paris don't, together. Don't oh, that the, that's the worst us. part. Yeah, that's that you want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Canceled. <laughs> Did you say Emily in Paris? <laughs> Seven months after that surgery, I got bottom surgery, <laughs> which was gender reassignment. And we surgery. celebrated that in the Castro yeah. video. Yeah. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was, it was beautiful. Wonderful. What it was a beautiful such a, time it was like lives. It was like a movie. Well, it also it, felt like, like we had all won, like all her friends, because like, Ever since we knew you, it was like, this is what we're all working for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was amazing. It was my 25th birthday. Yeah. And we had, it was called Rebirth Day. And it was like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Yeah. You know, rebirth. It was beautiful. Yeah. And it was a house full of trans women. Yeah. My yeah. trans mother from LA came to visit. My friends, my beautiful, wonderful partner. Mm -hmm. Such a momentous occasion mm -hmm. that I will all of us will remember forever. Yeah, literally. Right? Okay, then I'm just gonna <laughs> skip to, I'm just gonna transition then. I would uh, love telling okay. you. <laughs> 
I wanted you to say that because I just wanted to like let everyone know that like there's there's a reason why I brought her on because even this stuff I haven't even told you or told anyone oh. of why I'm scared to go on hormones. Okay. I'm putting, putting on my transgender lip gloss. Say hi to Jeej. Thanks Jeej. Not you helping us transition, both of us. She helped us both. <laughs> We bonded over that. So this is gonna come off as fucking conceited as 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 heck. Okay. But um I don't I don't I, I I'm aware that I don't pass right now. Uh -huh. But I also am aware that I um have never taken I've never done any medical thing towards transition. Uh -huh. And I'm pretty close to the I'm pretty I'm i I've got a head start. Yeah. Than girls that I've met. You you do. So I'm scared of taking a full thing of estrogen and passing, okay? Uh -huh. So I'm scared of passing because my voice doesn't. Okay. And I'm not a very commitment-oriented person. Yeah. So to have to take hormones would be a commitment to if I start passing, which I also might not, then I have to commit to some type of voice therapy. Yeah. For me, it would be really difficult to pass visually mm -hmm. and then vocally. I would think that's be difficult for most people. When people talk to me and like when guys talk to me and like I'm just like not trying to be clocked, yeah. like I'll just smile. It's so sad because I love my voice. I have a podcast, subscribe to it. The guy gets with Erica and Camille. I love my voice, but I think my voice is connected to my face. And then if I do voice therapy and it doesn't work, then I'm gonna live my life like Shrek 2. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to. Hey. <laughs> it's ma'am. No. Have you heard of that before? Oh yeah, for sure. I think it's a fear that most of us have. It didn't happen for you. What do you mean? Your voice transitioned with your body. But I worked insanely hard for it. I had a whole ass man voice. I know, but I thought that was med I thought that was chemical. I thought no. I well, but part of it. So the hormones don't change your voice. They changed your voice though. Yes, I do say <laughs> hormones change my voice a little bit. I was training my voice regularly all the time. And so your muscles were getting used to, you know, that stretching and that sort of way of speaking. Hormones do change fat redistribution, but also like, I think they changed how like water retention works in my body. And also like, and that affects mucus. I think society has made such a caricature of that woman. You can always clock a trans woman by her voice, no matter oh, how yeah. much surgery she has, and no matter how much, how beautiful she is, you'll, you know, by her voice and I remember that from my childhood growing up in Asia that's how Asian people would talk about trans people they would just talk about if you go to Thailand you know who the trans women are by just like listening to their voice and that was a huge fear for me too that's yeah. like the punchline it's the trope it's the trope it's terrifying it is terrifying I trained my voice to be very very high but then I was like I don't want to live my life in that high hi. range yeah I don't, I don't want to like hi oh my hi. god <laughs> And our like, trans girlfriends too, Diana. Yeah. Our, like their voices changed. I feel like my voice is deeper than all of theirs That's not started. True. My voice was almost as deep as yours. The mental changes mm -hmm. that you were talking about, you were saying you were enjoying who you were becoming, mm -hmm. and that that you were scared that your testosterone was going to take your womanhood away from you. Because I've taken medication before that has changed the way I think, and I'm really scared that estrogen would take my womanhood away from me because my womanhood lies so deeply into being an artist. I've taken things that have taken that away from me. And I'm scared that there's something in my mind that needs this blend of femininity and masculinity to make this art. The medications you're referring to are specifically developed for mind altering. Hormones don't affect your mental faculties as strongly as- I'm like, shocked because I hope that's true. Because that's end, that's because kind of also huge testosterone and estrogen can become each other. They're not chemically that different, so they're not going to affect you like a antidepressant or something. I said this in the beginning at the, when we were at the ferry building is that your friend said that I was going to age really bad. <laughs> so that made, that's what makes me want to take hormones. Is like I I'm very comfortable with this level of puss. How could I take a small amount of estrogen? to remain this level of puss without passing and age gracefully. That is a lot of variables. <laughs> yeah. Funnily enough, it has been four years since I transitioned and it took, it took, it, you took four years too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm really thinking about it now. The f effects they have on the body and mind are separate things, but they're not so different that you're gonna become an entirely different person. 
And for me, getting bottom surgery and getting rid of testosterone completely was a very important goal because I didn't want to age a certain way. And that's just how testosterone works and how estrogen works too. You age certain ways. I noticed that the women that blocked their T instead of getting, for example, an orchiectomy or bottom surgery tended to have periods where there were there was more testosterone because you're essentially suppressing it and not taking it out no i wouldn't do either of those i would leave the testosterone as it is yeah but i've noticed like it still affects parts of their aging they'll still have some male patterned aging i diagnosed myself with this and i don't know if i've talked about this on yeah. youtube but i diagnosed my well actually my my ex-girlfriend now <laughs> my ex trans girlfriend, uh -huh. she was the one that saw it on House MD on the show mm -hmm. and was like, I think you have Kelman's syndrome. So I don't have a sense of smell. I, and when I do, it's very, very, very low. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't know that nail polish we were had a scent for the longest time because it looks crazy. It looks like water through other senses is one where I deduct like what smells like what. Like having a really low or no sense of smell is a side effect of having extremely low hormone levels and the cure for this thing is hormone replacement therapy <laughs> i would smell a whole new world um, <laughs> and i knew someone was coming from my <laughs> and then another thing is like supposedly osteoporosis is like a really big side effect women and women, menopause have osteoporosis because of that reason and so I think that's what I have. I'm not gonna get it you tested. Get tested. To, I'm not gonna get tested because I don't want. I don't want a test to be like you're a man. <laughs> Plus I'm transgender. Like I yeah. feel like I have low hormone levels. And Camille said, you know, bitch, you're already 28. Like how much is your face gonna change? Like this I is be surprised. Well, that's what I'm scared. I don't want to be surprised. <laughs> it's like too much to think about. And I and I'm so slow at everything. And I'm just like but, I, I mean, don't want to make the wrong decision. You always do have the option, just like you tried your other medication, trying it for a period of time, say a month or a two months, and then stopping. I know tons of women who've done that. Yeah, I could see myself doing that if I needed to. It's a very slow process. I just think that all of the women around me that have taken these hormones have had an extremely drastic reaction. In what way? I mean, they become cis gender looking <laughs> we've known that with one two three four at least including you but we all blocked our tea very intensely so then maybe the next video you guys will see is i started hormone hormones <laughs> and i'm upset <laughs> it would be nice to like like you said you wanted to have a relationship to go through bottom surgery mm -hmm. i think it would be nice to be in a relationship where i felt like if i was going through puberty you know someone won't just leave me next thing okay what is like a she funny thing? Like, this is the trans agenda. <laughs> Texas, Texas government probably loves us. Oh my, but like secretly loves us. He's a chaser. Yeah. <laughs> Why else? So obsessed with the dolls. Obsessed. obsessed. Oh, should we talk about being dolls? Okay, can we talk about that real quick? This is so controversial. Don't cancel me. <laughs> and I hope Shanti doesn't mind me telling her tea. But the guy that she's dating um, calls her doll and she doesn't like it. And I was like, why? I think that's cute. Mm -hmm. And she's like, because I'm not an inanimate object. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I didn't even see it that way yeah and so why do trans girls have this new sudden urge to be the dolls of the dolls of the dolls we're the dolls but, if but you're the not dolls, dolls were dolls was always a term in the community not till gia gun probably no, the, no, the door she's that. open the, the girls think they're plastic so i guess they're just taking yeah. back their yeah. plasticity the dolls the dolls the dolls uh, well, i don't know if i call myself a doll <laughs> do you call yourself a doll no no all right what's like a funny thing that you've like encountered transitioning that like women do cis women do that you like never would have thought mine is <laughs> cis so women's is this, this makes a sound when they pee into the water okay and as a trans woman i there's the side of the bowl so i've never like made a splashing sound while peeing uh -huh. and there's all these waterfall okay. sounds <laughs> yeah and i'm like they're clocking me right now. <laughs> so I can talk about that. Because I've been on both sides of the spectrum now. True. Pre-op, I mean, yes, there's the side of the bowl, but like if you don't pee in the side of the bowl, then it makes a really loud noise because it's like gravity. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like falling from like the heavens. <laughs> <In> the <sky. laughs> now that like I'm on the other side of the chicken. spectrum, I make the loudest noise <laughs> possible. You go in there with a Because it's purpose. like a waterfall. <laughs> when we were hanging out with Lana, and we like both had to pee so bad and you were like it was right before bottom surgery and you were like let's just go outside the car this is the last time i can pee outside yes yes <laughs> i should get one of those like 
Oh, she wheeze. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Body hair management was one of those things. Okay. You know, like I hated my beard always and wanted to get rid of it. So I was always like clean shaven, but I wasn't like shaving my legs or I had like a little like fuzz on my chest. I wasn't shaving it or my fuzz. armpits or whatever. And I was just like, wear all these cute clothes. With like exposed. <laughs> yeah. Shirts. Yeah. It wasn't like an Indian uncle with like, you know, <laughs> It was just like a little like dust of hair. Yeah, I never had chest hair, so I wouldn't. Oh yeah, yeah. Blow testosterone. Blow testosterone. Like, I can't smell shame. <laughs> yeah. Or on the same note, like I think tucking in the beginning, and I used to love wearing leggings. And you've always loved wearing leggings. You loved wearing. Leggings. I do not wear leggings. Yeah, literally, one of my like freshman year college friends was like, "You wear a lot of leggings," and. <laughs> <gasps> she was being a solid friend right there. Yeah, yeah, she was like, That took uh, a lot of courage. I think so. She was like, you're very brave to just like walk around like that. And then I started wearing like long t-shirts yeah, 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 stuff like, that like yeah, went yeah, to yeah. my knees. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, it's just the style. Okay guys, um, that's gonna be it for this journey, this hormone journey, uh, this this transition journey. I mean, like, who's trans? Oh yeah, I actually, I'm actually training. I'm gonna, I'm gonna become a man. Uh, I support that, you. Yeah, I do kind of, does it kind of like... I support you. It's does that be change difficult. things? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please follow Aya Shani on Instagram. Um, subscribe to my podcast on Apple Podcasts. It's called The Gag Is with Erica and Camille. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to the channel. Have you heard this this little part? Um, if, if you believe in life after love, share this video with your friends. Uh, it's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> tune in for the next for the next hormone update. Hormone up and growing boobies. <laughs> cut that out. Bye guys. Bye. Cut, cut that out. <laughs> That's what they did to you. You went to the doctor. He's like, cut that out. Uh, uh, we gotta go. We gotta uh, go. <laughs>